looking at here is artificial intelligence generated uh, artwork. And wow, that just sounds like a complete oxymoron. How can artificial intelligence create art? Well, they've done it, boys and girls. Guess what? Here we are in, in 2023, and it's a happening. So are you ready for the next revolution? It's happening right now. <laughs> Remember the first time you did a VHS movie, and you brought home this big, bulky uh, player and plugged it in, and all of a sudden, you're watching a Hollywood movie in your living room? Remember that moment? And how about the first cassette tape you got? You know, your mom bought in this little, little tiny, you know, little disc, little box thing, you know, it's about a half inch thick and it's square and a rectangular, and she plugged it in and says, this is going to play 90 minutes of music. And you went, oh my God, this is amazing. Remember how cool that was? Or the first PC you got. Remember the first personal computer you, you bought and you owned and you turned it on and went, oh, I had this here. It's mine. I own it. Wow. You know? Pretty cool moment, huh? Or your first uh, your first smartphone that you got. Oh my God, you know, those things are so amazing. Well, this is another one of those moments. This artificial intelligence, art generation is something that we're going to be living with and, and being with for quite some time, I'm afraid. I just got a, um, a uh, piece of news this morning in one of my news feeds. It says Microsoft, Microsoft has just re uh, released a thing called Visual chat GPT, meaning that they're integrating the artificial intelligence uh, chat bots with the artificial intelligence um, R generators. Holy smokes, what a, what a scary alliance. So you can just sit back and say, hey, uh, generate a picture of a buffalo in a um, mountain meadow for me. And the GPT will hear that and create all of the correct prompts and all of the interface and uh, run the uh, command line for it. What? So anyhow, pretty scary stuff. But we can create, you know, this a truly incredible artwork. Again, this is not a real human being. This young lady here is a figment of my imagination. The baby on the throne, however, was a photograph of this baby that we warped into uh, a, uh, a little princess complete with a crown sitting on her throne. And that was taken from a virtual photograph. Um, and of course, you know, lifelike flowers and um, a young man drinking a beer. I did that for the uh, Lumberjack Festival here in Old Town uh, recently. That was a commissioned piece of art. Smart ass friend of mine says, hey, how about giving me a picture of a polar bear in a blizzard, huh? And I'm going, okay. <laughs> in my, uh, my daughter really happens to like uh, horses, and so I got a picture of her riding this little. Um, you can also take these incredibly ornate, really complex characters, like you see here. But ultimately, it's all coming from our brain. Even though we're using the technology of artificial intelligence, we are still, as individuals, using our imagination and our knowledge of the technology to create this stuff. So on that happy note, Mr. Harrison, tag, you're it, buddy. I'm going to yeah. turn over to you and uh, let you have some fun. With this. And uh, when you're wrapping up, I'll take over and I've got a bunch more stuff to show you. Good deal. So a little tag team presentation between me and Bill Harrison. Yeah. You don't know us. Um, again, I'm Mark Chamberlain. I'm a professional photographer. I have been for over 40 years. Um, I also own Smarter Picks Photography School, which is your sponsor for today's event. And we offer a wide range of classes and tutoring on virtually any aspect of digital photography. So if you learn and interested in you know, getting better at your craft and taking a great photo intentionally, I would love to help you out. So smarterpicks.com is our website, um, and please check it out. Bill, you want to say a bit about your background? Um. Yeah, uh, you may as well stop uh, sharing there, Mark. Yeah, I will. I'll share here in just a second. Hi, everybody. Wow, great. Good to see you all. Um, <laughs> well, my wife, Linda, who's also here, she and I were in the photo business for well, 40 plus years. Um, it was a service business. We were a photo lab. Uh, and it's what we used to be called, you know, those things with chemicals and dark rooms and processors and so on. And we did that for a long time. And then when digital came along and 
turned everything upside down. We started doing that, and uh, I started using Photoshop. I don't know exactly what version, maybe two or three. It was before layers. I remember when they introduced layers. <laughs> okay, so anyway, um, done it a long time, but not doing it anymore. We're we're retired, and I'm just just goofing off and having a good time. Um, so let me get my presentation going here if I can. Uh, ah, yeah, always happens, Mark. You got to let me in. You got to enable uh, uh, screen sharing. Oh, gosh, do I have to go? Uh, I, forget, I forget that every time when I'm. Uh, okay, buddy, you're in. Go for it. You got it? Okay, there we go. All right, so um, let's. Does that work? See all the words on the right there? I assume it's working. Okay. So uh, the, the first thing I want to say is that I am no expert on this stuff. Believe me, I have just been kind of horsing around with it for the last few weeks, having a great time. But um, I am no authority and no expert. And if I say something that's just flat wrong, why, please uh, correct me and... You know, we'll keep uh, keep the misinformation from from spreading. Um, but I will I will try to tell you a little bit about what my own experience, limited though it is, has been with these things. Um, and there are lots of different AI imaging programs out there. I think it's correct to call them programs. But in case you're a real newbie to this. Uh, I will mention that these things are all online. Uh, you don't have to install software to do this. You don't have to worry about your graphics card or your computer memory uh, because it's all done server side. Slight exception to Mid Journey, you do have to install a program, but even there, the actual number crunching is done um, at their end. But those, those are just a few that I've list, listed there of uh, the various places where you, can, where you can do this stuff. And most of the AI mm, programs that you'll encounter uh, work with text prompts, which is to say you type in a description of the picture that you want, and then hopefully it makes it and you have your picture. Um, and uh, most of these sites also have a social aspect uh, where they will show you examples of what the users have made, uh, maybe the ones that have gotten the most uh, faves or likes or whatever. Uh, and, and, and this uh, mid-journey program that Mark's going to talk about, uh, you can actually see you can see these things going by live where people are actually typing and pictures are coming up. <laughs> and this, I just happened to see when I was first looking at it. Uh, I don't, I didn't notice the exact prompt that this person used, but it was uh, along the lines of they wanted a gunslinger on a Mustang. And I thought this was kind of funny because you got, uh, you know, it's covering all the bases there. You got, you got the horse, you got the car, and you got the cowboy. Um, but uh, I, I've done a few um, images with the Mid Journey program, uh, and it does do some remarkable, some remarkable things. Um, the prompt I used on this one was very simple. You can see it in quotes here. Miles Davis kind of blue, and I, th I think that's beautiful. I wouldn't mind having that on a wall, and may end up there one day. Um, oh boy. Uh, this one I got a kick out of. Um, you can see the prompt, Tiger curled up sleeping. Well, he's not really curled up and he's not sleeping, but still we got the tiger on the bed. So there's there's the cat on the bed, kind of like that. Um, and the other thing that you can do with these prompts, and again, Mark's going to go into that in more detail, but you can give it instructions as to the kind of image you want. Um, the style. Uh, you can even tell it that you want it to look like a painting by a certain artist. And so you'll notice in this prompt, the only thing that has 
anything to do with the subject is that one word piano. Everything else is describing the kind of piano and the kind of image. And sure enough, we got a elaborate ornate fantasy piano right there. Um, but that's all I'm going to say about Midjourney because I got another AI software place that I want to uh, tell you about. Um, as I say, Mark's, Mark's uh, Mr. Midjourney. He's going to tell you about that. Um, I found I found Midjourney very challenging to get uh, to get started with. And so if Mark does offer a class, I will jump on it because uh, save yourself a lot of grief and you don't end up all frustrated like this poor guy. Of course, part of his problem is that he's looking at the wrong side of the computer monitor, but even so, uh, Discord is, is tough. But <clears throat> what I've been having a lot of fun with is Creative Fabrica's Spark. So Creative Fabrica, you've probably never heard of it, right? Uh, nobody's ever heard of it. And certainly nobody has ever heard of the fact that they offer AI imaging. I just knew about the place <clears throat> because, I don't know, I saw a link to it sometime, probably two or three years ago. And mainly their thing has been uh, a place where you can go and buy at very reasonable rates uh, fonts and clip art and backgrounds and overlays and textures and all all that stuff that you can kind of use with photoshop um and in fact they give a lot of it away uh every day they give stuff away um so i have been kind of a follower of creative fabrica but then i noticed a little while ago gee they got this spark thing and it's some kind of ai and i'll tell you i have had a ball with it i like it because it is very easy as far as I'm concerned, it's at the opposite end of the spectrum in regard to how challenging it is relative to mid-journey because it's not challenging at all. It's a cinch, uh, nothing to it. That's a lot of fun. And many of the images that it comes up with, I think, are pretty amazing. And, of course, I'll be showing a bunch of those. But uh, it's our secret because, like I said, very few people, I think, have ever heard of it. Certainly, if you look at articles online, that talk about the 10 best AI imaging places or the 20 best or whatever, you're never going to see, you're never going to see this one mentioned, but it's out there. Uh, and, and actually, the image up on the screen there was made with this Creative Fabrica AI. Um, and the prompt that I used was, uh, it is our secret, that's all I put in. And I think that's, that's quite charming, you know, you got those schoolgirls. Uh, sharing a secret. Uh, she's got the finger up to her lips. The other one looks like she's winking. And and oddly enough, it was actually able to put the word secret up here. Um, there are certain things that these AI programs all seem to have trouble with. Letters, oddly enough, are one and, and fingers and hands are another. Um, so when you get into Creative Fabric of Spark, uh, they got several ways you can go. You can put in the text prompt just like mid-journey just like all the others you can also use a text prompt for what they call their sketch feature which always gives you images that look like this black and white kind of like pen and ink drawings pretty good i think <laughs> and you can even make repeating patterns um, which probably isn't going to come in handy real often but you never know but <clears throat> the main thing the thing that I've spent a ridiculous number of hours doing is using a photo or an image of some kind as the prompt. So that's what I'm concentrating on here this evening is um, creating images starting with an image, starting with an image prompt. And so on the left, we got the little stuffed uh, gnome there or whatever he is and some painted uh, eggs. And on the right, we got what this software, what this AI came back with, starting with the image on the left. And uh, those are only four of 12. Uh, every time you give it a photo to work with, you get 12 back. It's a pretty good deal, huh? Um, and there's four. And you notice they don't look quite like 
the original. In fact, they don't look much of anything like the original, although they have, you know, there's the blue background and the and the beard and the eggs and so on. Here's another example, and I wanted to spend just a moment on this because as I've worked with this service, software, whatever, I've come to realize that the way it works is that really the first thing it does is image recognition. It tries to figure out, okay, what is this a picture of? And then it just kind of riffs on that. Uh, now, many of us are, are, are familiar with the filters in Photoshop. They've been there forever, you know, um, dry brush and, uh, and some of those. And uh, other third-party software like Topaz Studio uh, has all kinds of filters. And so underneath the original photo here, I have a little example of what Topaz Studio did with one of its crazier filters. And obviously, it's made a big change there. You know, it's instead of a, a recognizable uh, black uh, bodied lens, uh, you've got all these uh, colored uh, sparkles. But then again, if you look at what it did, the original image is still there. Uh, you know, the lens is there in the same place, the the swirly lights in the glass are there. And so it's just kind of remodeled the original photo. Um, and, um, <clears throat> and it doesn't know or care what that photo is of. It just does its, does its algorithms and comes up with this modified version. However, what the AI does is it says, ah, this is a camera lens. Uh, it, it recognizes that it is a camera lens. And so among the 12 variations that I got here are a couple of camera lenses in different positions, right? I mean, they're on the blue background, but they're quite different lenses. And in some cases, we've got the camera, which was not in the original photo. So the AI realized, quote, quote, that this is a photo of a camera lens and in its generations or variations, uh, in some cases, it actually added the camera. In fact, it looks like it noticed that it was a Nikkor because uh, it sort of attempted to put an icon on the camera. Uh, and sometimes, oh, <laughs> this is why I think this is so much fun. Sometimes the results just floor you, <laughs> at least me. Um, here's a picture of uh, an, a big old steam locomotive at Henry Ford. Uh, and, and remember, you don't give this thing any guidance. You just toss the image to it, and it just gets on its horse and rides off in all directions. And here are two of the 12 variations that it came up with. And I mean, holy smoke, the top one here, I mean, that, that's Magritte or, or Dolly or somebody. How crazy is that? And then over here, you know, it's taken this lumbering old giant steam engine and, and made it into an Art Deco travel poster, right? Uh, crazy stuff. So, um, uh, and, and sometimes, you know, you got to wonder what's going on with it. Uh, here, for example, are a couple of animal skulls out at the MSU Museum. And where, where did the toilet come from? My, my guess would be that this white area said, well, okay, must be they're sitting on a toilet or beside one or something. And and we got a lot of human skulls in there too, which were not in the original. But but hey, you got to say, uh, kind of interesting images there. Um, and this one, here's the uh, vulture down at uh, Potter Park Zoo. He's good looking to begin with, but look at these amazing, beautiful, colorful, non-existent uh, birds that uh, that it came up with, uh, you know, it's kind of using his color scheme and his uh, chest feathers there. But other than that, just out of the blue. Um, all right. <laughs> now this one, about the time I did this, I started thinking, you know, they've really got something here. Um, so I, um, I set up just in, on my workbench, uh, my toy Tyrannosaurus Rex, uh, and I got this um, rubber uh, centipede at the Dollar Tree. So I put that on, well, let's see what that does. What did it do? Came up with this stuff. I mean, holy mackerel, look at that. Uh, 
monsters of the id there, uh, uh, starting with this photo. It's crazy. Um, now, occasionally, well, you never know what you're going to get. And certainly, that's been my experience. Uh, and, and hey, that's part of the fun. Uh, you can uh, you can come up with something funny. You can come up with uh, something rather charming, or it can come up with uh, things that could be a little dark and uh, and spooky. Now, the original here, of course, had been photoshopped. Uh, this was taken at uh, Mad Mark Chamberlain's uh, ha uh, Halloween uh, graveyard meetup, <laughs> and so it's kind of kind of spooky looking to begin with, hopefully. But look what it did. We got the white nun here, and we got these. Oh. <laughs> and remember, I I mentioned that uh, these AIs. I don't know if it's intentional or they're just not haven't figured it out, but. Uh, really have a problem with uh, letters uh, you know you can see there's there are characters there but they're not the ones that we're used to it's like some some other language but no pretty creepy um, have you got the this, pro I'm sorry what's that have you got the pro version uh, yeah because um, I had heard the that the uh, the less expensive versions wouldn't let you do text, but the pro version would. Well, it could be. And like I say, I sure don't know. I mean, I would think that with the ability that this thing has to produce images of all kinds, it certainly ought to be able to do the ultimate. But just in my experience, they don't seem to, and not just this one. Um, but uh, uh, this one, Boy, <laughs> uh, we started out with a photo of a drinking fountain at oh. Hawk Island wrapped up in black plastic for the winter. All right. And uh, I thought it looked like, oh, I can't remember the artist, but the guy who wraps things or used to. So that's all right. Let's take a picture of it. Yeah, Christo. Right. Thank you. So, uh, so I tossed that into this uh, AI. And look at these, you know, I mean, it's given us figures. It's given us a person entirely wrapped in black. Uh, down here at the bottom, he's on a street. Uh, up here, he almost looks like he's in some kind of camp or something. Whoa, I mean, wow. Um, but other times, <laughs> it comes up, oh, this just cracks me up. Here's, uh, here's a, a statue of uh, Sparty. This is the original uh, that the big one out on campus was made from. And I was just goofing around with a product mock-up one time. So I made put this uh, bottle of wine, but I put that into the AI. What do I get? I get statues and wine. Um, <laughs> the guy down here in the corner. Is that funny or what? Maybe it's just me, but I think that's, I think he's hilarious. I'll, I'll have what he's having. Um, the, one, the one in the the lower right corner, I think, is amazing. Yeah. That's really Isn't cool. It? <laughs> Isn't it? And, Very and, cool. You know, yeah, and, and it started from the one on the left here and came back with 12 variations, and that was one of them. <laughs> I thought that was delightful. And uh, and this, too, here's here's the big boy up in St. John's. You know, we've all seen the, the big plastic big boy and look at what it did <laughs> just crazy isn't it um all right let us get serious for a moment not not really but i think this one is worth looking at for a second the photo that i used is on the left and it's just snow and branches uh it is mirrored you know uh sometimes i get a lot get a, a, a kick out of mirroring images. And as soon as you do that, faces come out all over the place. So we've kind of got a couple of eyes here. Um, but this is what I started with. On the right here is one of the variations that it came back with. Now, I think, I think that's beautiful. I think it's deep. If, if I had created that in any sense other than just starting with a photo and randomly tossing it in, 
But if, you know, if I had somehow made that as a piece of art, I would be very pleased with it. Um, so, you know, can, uh, <clears throat> can, can this unthinking mechanical, essentially, you know, this, this non-living thing make beautiful art? Well, I guess, I mean, there it is. Um, all right, so I'm, I'm just going to give you, I'm going to flash through uh, some galleries of other examples. You know, there's no point. Uh, the whole idea, the whole point is uh, uh, the images. So I'm going to have uh, originals on the left. We're back at Henry Ford here with a race car. And, and you know, notice what, what it did. Um, it recognized, okay, it's a race car. It recognized that it's indoors. It's in some kind of... Uh, you know, indoor setting and not out on a track or whatever. Uh, it kept the color scheme. Beyond that, <laughs> it just went just went nuts. Um, uh, and, and here, okay, the garden light down at the Japanese garden at LCC. I mean, these look like photos, right? Uh, and and they look like garden lights, but they're all different. And this is just four of the twelve, and all twelve of them were. Kind of interesting, and so you know maybe this would come in handy for somebody who's designing a garden light. Uh, they start with one, put it into this uh, AI, and they get uh, twelve uh, possibilities. On the other hand, <clears throat> this picture of the old twin lens camera. These don't look like photos at all. <clears throat> they look like uh, pen and ink drawings or something, and kind of a kind of a steampunk vibe and of course uh, quite uh, quite impractical cameras um, so it, it's uh, like I said you never know you, you may get photos you may get drawings whatever um, here's a picture of a, of a doll in a, in a wicker basket in a window um, and here's what it came up with and you know it, it recognized the doll it recognized the wicker basket even recognized the window um and i think we're back in uh into the realm of uh, creepy stuff here of course dolls are scary anyway and these are uh these are even scarier uh so and this one oh my gosh sparty this is the same it, it seems to love statues and figurines and anything of that nature uh as opposed to landscapes or, or, you know, kind of busy, highly detailed scenes. But anyway, here we got the Sparty statue on black. And here are some of the variations. Look at that. I mean, my gosh. Uh, I think the one in the lower center there looks like <clears throat> Joe Biden. I don't know if anybody else sees it. But <laughs> I think that's Joe. Um, all right. Here's another surprise. Uh, a tiki mug. You know, and I had in Photoshop, I had made that background, that disc there behind it. Put that in. What do I get? I get 12 beautiful plates. Um, you know, look at those. And and uh, if somebody wants to get those actually manufactured as, as actual plates and put them on Etsy, you know, they're going to sell like crazy. And a 60-40 works, uh, works for me. Um, and hey, Bill, um, yes. Stuff you're showing now is that all the CX Spark image mix, and do you give it prompts as well, or you no, simply hand no, it? No, no, no. Good, good. The the image mix. Uh, this <clears throat> this Creative Fabrica Spark thing does have um, options where you can start from a prompt, but in that case, it's only a prompt. It's strictly text, and then makes an image. This image mix, uh, as far as I know, there is no option to add a prompt. The image is the prompt. You 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 tell it, okay, here's my image, and it just you know does what it does. It makes plates, or it makes drawings, or it makes photos. But uh, but no, there is no other AI software um, will let you, and sometimes insists that you add a text prompt. To a photo but this one no this one you just put the photo in hold your breath and wait and see what you get hey bill yeah doug i'm here yeah hi I, doug. I, 
Hey, nice to hear from you again. Yeah. Um, I just read an article that was stating that unlike pictures, you know, where the copyright is under the photographer's ownership, yep. AI generated art is not protected that's, unless it has a human touch. Yeah. So uh, that's my understanding too. And of course, uh, I'm no more an expert on uh, law than I am on AI imaging, but uh, that's my understanding uh, is that uh, uh, you you don't have a copyright on it, but neither does anybody else. And in exactly. fact, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to show some examples that have a little bit to do with that here in this real shortly. All right. Um, all right. Well, we're just in the in the fun stuff again. Picture of our cat with his cat toys. What's it do? Makes him into a cat toy. Great. Huh? <laughs> um, and this one here again. Where does this come from? It's another one from the graveyard meetup. And, uh, you know, it's been photoshopped a little in the front of filter on it, made it monochrome. But I get these cartoons. I've never seen stuff like this come back from this software before. But, you know, pretty, pretty cool stuff, I think. I mean, look at those. Oh, boy. Um, and here's uh, Sir Galvanized from down at the... Uh, Scrap Fest in Old Town a few years ago. Now we're back to photos and uh, they're pretty realistic looking photos. They may not be practical uh, armor, but uh, they certainly look like uh, variations on uh, on armor, don't they? Um, okay. Yeah, the, large one, the large one in the center, that was really, that's really neat looking. Isn't that cool? Yeah. 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 Oh, what, what fun. Um, all right, well, I'm going to wrap up here real shortly. This is actually the last of the, the galleries. I, when I read about AI and people using it and working with it for a while, there's a theme that, that often comes up that there, there's something kind of uncanny about it. Um, you know, when, when, when we're working with Photoshop or a word processor, uh, you know, basically, okay, it's a, it's a tool. We we learn the commands and and we learn the, um, what you have to do to to get it to do what you want it to do. But you don't really think of it as, uh, well, it's just software, okay. But this stuff, um, I've started lately, kind of pre-processing images sometimes to get it, you know, to 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 because you begin to um, uh, you begin to know what kind of images to, to start with that are more likely to give you pleasing results. Uh, and uh, though in this case, uh, you know, uh, it likes, like I say, it likes faces, figurines, tabletop stuff. And I wanted to put some glasses on here. So these are actually a pair of Mark Chamberlain's old sunglasses. And I uh, put, put them on there. And I gave it to the AI. And, you know, when this stuff comes back, I look at that and it's, I think, you know, those are really creative. If, if I had engaged a graphic artist and I had given her this uh, image on the left and said, you know, just maybe some graphics kind of along these lines, uh, but, but let your imagination run wild. And, and, and if these had come back, I'd be very pleased and I would say, wow, yeah, well, that, that, that is, that, that's very imaginative. Well, can this thing imagine? I don't suppose so, but when you, when you look at that, <laughs> I got to wonder. Hmm. Um, all right, just about done here. Here's um, just a couple of things about this particular one that I would caution you about. Um, the, you know, it has strengths certainly, but, uh, None of these AIs, I, I, I don't think any of them are all that good with people and hands seem to be a particular problem. So here's uh, an original photo on the far left. Then beside it, we've got what one of them that uh, Spark did. And the people, you know, the faces actually and everything aren't too bad. But the guy's got some really strange fingers, and he also has an arm problem here because you know he's got one on one on her <laughs> arm and one in his pocket. Um, so that that happens. Um, and uh, the house here, the the moon house down at the LCC, you know, it made an interesting variation. 
but if you zoom in on it and these things are big too the ones that it returns are 4,000 and some pixels whereas most of the other AIs are going to give you 1024 but you see how blurry and smeary it is when, when you zoom in okay that's not always the case sometimes they're nice and sharp but uh, other times you know they look good really small but when you when you zoom in you realize well you know there's just nothing there um okay hey, uh, a few, hey, few questions that you might have could um, you yeah add ahead. sharp to the description and and it ends up being sharper have you tried that i have not because so far as i know on this particular one that i'm using you don't have the option of giving it any text uh, okay. you just give it the photo and it it goes with it so yeah um i wish you know this stuff of course it's all new and hopefully they will i mean i i would be fine with them adding a prompt although it is kind of fun right now because you don't know what you're going to get but uh, certainly it would be nice if they would tighten up the detail uh in sometimes it's there sometimes it's not okay questions that you may have is it free well not 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 really um the spark thing that i'm using uh you can actually use it for free but you can't download anything and it doesn't show you the results very big so you know it's not worth much uh, so i paid nine dollars for a month and i just renewed for another month most of them do have either a trial period or you can do a few a day or a few a month for free but uh, basically they're all in it for the money and they're all going to be around ten dollars a month or so they all have their own plans and lots of variations well is it good for anything i mean you can you can see i've had a lot of fun tossing photos at this thing and and seeing what it does uh could these have any possible practical use so i did a little you know imaginary um applications here took some of them that the uh, AI had produced and okay I could imagine that if you needed a cover for a report or you needed to make an ad or whatever put some text with some of these and uh, they would work um, but let's get a little more specific so this is a case study uh, but it's uh, imaginary I just made it up but uh, I just okay off the top of my head what might i want an image of all right and the example that i came up with off the top of my head was a roman emperor in a toga so i put exactly that roman emperor in a toga into this spark sketch now in this case we are working from a prompt and there's no image involved it's the same it's the same place still creative fabrica but now, now we're using text instead of a photo. So here's, here's one of the versions that it came up with, which I think is pretty good. You know, if you needed uh, a generic Roman emperor in a toga, well, that, that'd be all right. But what are the alternatives? Well, um, you know, you could go to a stock agency. Um, you could hire Mark Chamberlain and send him to Rome and have him photograph some... Uh, some Roman Emperor uh, statues or you could do what most people would do which is to go to Google and do a Google image search so I did and of course I got thousands and thousands of Roman emperors but here's the thing um, a lot of them uh, didn't have heads of the ones that did when you grab something off the web it's going to be small. It's going to be very low res because you don't want it big for a web page. So, you know, you're going to have maybe 200 pixels. This thing is 4,000 and some. The other thing is that it's probably copyrighted. I mean, it certainly isn't yours originally to begin with. And most likely, you really don't have any right to do anything with it. Technically, you don't even have a right to download it. Okay. Um, so basically, if, if we need a Roman emperor, we can go the AI route and we get something that is unique and good. And by the way, in regard to being unique, and we were talking a little bit about the copyright thing, um, they say 
that every time you make an AI image, <laughs> it is it is unique. It has not existed until you click the button. Um, even if you use the same prompt uh, in the same service, there are random numbers involved and you're going to get a different result. So really, not only does my Roman emperor here not, not only does that image not belong to somebody else, I was the first one to ever see it. And if I use it in some way, nobody will have ever seen it because it's brand new. It didn't exist. Wow. So basically, you know, you can you can do the AI if you if you need something like that and you get something that's unique and, and high quality technically. Or you can go to Google and grab stuff off web pages and they're going to be illegal and crummy. <laughs> uh, all right. Bill, when you generated that, did you uh, use the word cheesecake or uh, did you show them a piece of cheesecake? Cheesecake. Oh, yes. you mean the guy with his, uh, yeah. Show, show, showing his, uh, us th uh, his thigh. Yeah. Yeah, he is. Yeah, well, he's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's sexy Roman emperor. What can I say? You know? <laughs> Hey, that, that's that's not bad for business, you know. If you no, it's bizarre. Need the illustration, you may as well have one. That uh, all right, all right. Enough of that. So, uh, let's try one more. Last one here. Another thought experiment. Suppose I need to do something about Jack Kerouac. Again, the top of my head. So um, here's what the real Jack looked like. Of course, I stole that off the internet, and. Um, I put it in the sketch program and not bad, you know, they look kind of like him and you fix up the uh, the hair a little and the thing on his forehead and those would work, but there's no typewriter. So let's say now I, I really wanted the typewriter. Well, there's a lot of these AI things out there. Uh, so I tried Dal E. Now, I am not impressed with Dal E. Uh, actually, of all the ones I've tried, and of course, I've only had small amount of experience with any of them. But Dal E kind of comes in last. But I put in the same prompt, give me Jack Kerouac and his typewriter. And this one on the right here, holy mackerel, look at that. You know, it's it's kind of like uh, it is with the Creative Fabrica software. Sometimes you just get off the wall results. But as far as I'm concerned, that'd be great. If, if uh, Lansing Photo Meetup wants to have a, a Jack Kerouac appreciation night, hey, I got my, uh, I got my graphic right there, <laughs> right? Wow. And, uh, you know, the, the fun part is going to be having all the, the hipsters and the intellectuals uh, standing around um, debating what uh, beat artist uh, created that, that particular uh, masterpiece. So point is that, yeah, you know, you can, you can absolutely use AI uh, if you need a particular image. Uh, it's just another way of coming up with something. And when you, when you get it, it's yours to use any way you want. Um, all right, that's it. Um, you can download this presentation. I put the link in a uh, comment on the Meetup webpage. Um, you can email me. These links won't work until you actually download, but then they will. Um, the Photoshop actions here are not AI, but it does include my mirror action, which I think is fun. So um, I hope. I hope that was of some interest um, and, and some entertainment. Um, I do have one little postscript here, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna turn it over to Mark. But you know, Mark's friend, he's he's a good friend, and uh, I I was concerned that he might think that this AI is just gonna you know nobody's gonna want him to take pictures, but the fact is that he can actually use it to improve his photography because here on the left. We have one of Mark's photos of uh, one of his food photos, right? Which, of course, I stole off his website. And, uh, you know, we got the fish and the fries. But look at, look at how these are improved here, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah, I think that's a uh, uh, All right, that's it, folks. That's it for me. <laughs> back, back to you, Mark. Uh -huh. Ah, uh, Mr. Harrison. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. All right. Well, let me get rid of some of my communications uh, attempts here and um, get back to, uh, gosh, where did it go? I lost my, uh, here it is. Here we go. Everybody hear me okay?
Yep. All good? All right, great. Um, so thanks, Bill. That was fun. You guys, know, nice little trip down and seeing what some of the uh, what the capabilities are um, and some of the issues that we run into. I mean, we're talking about the copyright thing, and that we could talk for the next three hours about because it's, it's heavily debated. Um, but the bottom line is, um, it's a new art form. Remember, remember the ASCII art back in the seventies. I remember being in high school in about nineteen seventy-two, and um, in a computer science class. <clears throat> and one of our assignments was to write a basic program that would um, make some kind of a recognizable character using ASCII art. Well, that, boys and girls, was the beginning of, of computer art. So to say the least, it's come a long ways. A couple of mileposts along the way was a, in 73, a guy named Harold Cohen um, developed a system and the little weird little drawing you see in the upper right hand corner is what his his program called Aaron created. Pretty crude stuff, but it was still generated by a computer in 1973. That was pretty damn amazing. Then in the early 2000s, um, I believe it was Google, <clears throat> decided they wanted to catalog all of the images on the internet. And they started this thing called ImageNet. Um, that could be used to, you know, to train algorithms to catalog photographs and identify objects. Oh boy. And that was a cool and groovy thing. Um, and it developed a database of over a thousand objects, 50,000 images and hundred thousand test images. And, uh, and it was kind of the foundation for the beginning research on the AI generators. Well, let's talk a little bit about the mechanics of AI, which I am not an authority on by any means, but here's, here's some, some staggering facts. On an average day, worldwide users share 5 billion images a day. Holy molies. Can you imagine what you get to the end of a year? Take 5 billion and multiply times 365 and holy molies, that, that's a massive number. So to say the least, the AI um, has been trained to go out and literally comb um, the internet, um, they use like the search bots that we can know about that Google uses and the other service services use. And they go out and they find this massive cache of, um, of images. And it relies upon uh, some of the alt text, um, which is a, like a, a tag that people put onto uh, an image saying, uh, this is an apple, this is a cat, you know? Um, and so the websites can tell things apart. And it also is getting smart enough to recognize things and going, oh, that's an apple, hey, that's a cat. And just inherently knows what some of that stuff is and it's kind of self-training in that respect. A little scary, but you know, it, it, it's got a massive database of images to play with. And that's kind of what we're seeing well, with the AI generation. Um, artificial intelligence has permeated the creative world for gosh, the last decade if not more, a lot more probably. Um, but as photographers, we have been using uh, AI tools like the neural, neural filters of Photoshop, or Bill mentioned earlier, Topaz Studio is one of our favorites. Um, Nick, um, and there's a whole bunch of uh, software out there that uses AI uh, for all kinds of stuff, anything from enhancing uh, faces to removing objects out of the background to hey, you name it, um, it's all out there. Hey Bill, for some reason I'm just seeing you and not me on the on the video. Is everybody seeing my face? Okay. Yeah, I I, I see Mark, um, uh, but I'm, I I see your screen, but usually it seems like it's more more full screen. I've I've got my my icons at the bottom, and I've got you know you and some other people at the top, and then the screen in between. I it's working though. I mean, I'm seeing what you're showing. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Um. I just wonder if you're actually seeing my talking head here or not. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, yeah. I, I um, do. I okay, do. good. Cool. Thanks. So the the digital music world, gosh, that's been, you know, uh, inundated by uh, technology since the 70s, and if not earlier, um, with all the synthesizers and the, uh, and the synthetic workstations that people use to create instrumentation with. Um, and that's been around for, you know, a good 60 years. Um, so the weird thing though is that there are a few actual musicians playing on any kind of you know modern recordings, 
Um, and to be a one-man band is really like no big deal at all as long as you have some technical skills. And you can master all this crazy, these crazy screens you see up here. <clears throat> um, I personally have a little bit of experience with that. And um, it, it is unbelievable the things you can create um, off of a computer driven um, music system. It's called a digital audio workstation is the official term for that. But anyhow, we're not alone here in the uh, visual world. The audio world's been around for quite some time doing this. Um, the bottom line here is that one of my favorite words, if anybody who's been around me very long hears me talk about this, is a term that I like to call techno art. So techno art is a term that says we have a technology-based art form and that we can take unique ideas and concepts and, and thoughts that we cook up in our little human brains and use the technology skillfully to help us create and manifest those, um, those objects. If I said, um, I wanna create a picture of a camera uh, splashing down in, in blue liquid, uh, wow, there it is. So that's the fun of it. The interesting thing is that if we look at some of the text-based um, AI stuff that we're using, there are, somebody said there's over 9 million prompts you can use to tweak an image in Mid Journey or Stable Fusion, which are two of the biggest uh, kings out there. So, wow, you know, so what that means is, is that, okay, I didn't create this directly. I didn't have a pen in my hand. I didn't sit there and draw out this weird thing that, like Bill was showing some of his stuff. Um, but I skillfully used the technology, my knowledge and my mastery um, of what the capabilities of the technology are is what helped me as a artist, as a creative professional, create these amazing images. And yeah, maybe I didn't, you know, have, I didn't take a picture with my camera, I didn't draw it with my pen, but I instructed the machine on what to do and came up with this unique manifestation um, in my, in that's we consider to be a very pleasing art form. So that's my defense for what it's worth. Um, of people who say, oh, it's not art, man. You didn't create that. And saying, well, you know, yes and no. <laughs> so anyhow, so point Mark, to point. Yeah. I was, just, I was just Googling stable fusion. I'm finding stable diffusion, but not stable fusion. But not what? I, I'm finding stable diffusion, but not stable fusion. Oh, maybe, you know, again, I may have grabbed the wrong phrase there. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll look at some of the sites here just a quick minute. Uh, next couple of screens, we'll look at actually okay. look at some of the websites. Uh, okay. But thanks. I'm sorry for the confusion on that. Okay. So um, here's, here's a good example of this. Um, a good friend of mine is uh, his name, uh, he goes by the pen name of uh, E.R. Donaldson. Um, Eric is a, is a good friend of mine and been somewhat of a mentor to me on this whole uh, uh, trip of, of, um, of AI. And Eric is a science fiction writer and he's published oh, at least seven or eight books now and it's done pretty well with them. Um, here's one of his characters from one of his books. And just to show you the level of creativity with this, I mean, you've got a beautiful green skin, dryad sorceress with Rex hair high fantasy in an 8K resolution, plain background, photorealistic, cinematic lighting, dramatic shadows, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of creativity in that line of code that he's written. And more than likely, he did that at least 20 or 30 times to refine and perfect this wonderful, beautiful character he's got. Gosh, she's just gorgeous. But it took his knowledge, his skill, his creativity, his ability to manifest in his mind what he wanted to see and then use the technology to create this lovely uh, green skin dryad sorceress. Um, here's another example of that. Um, let me get that out of the way here, I can see it. Um, another, you know, another command line that was used for a, um, for a graphic novel. Um, this was done, you know, like a comic book sort of style. Um, but you can see here the complexity of the command line that he's uh, used to create these lovely creatures. Um, so here's a, uh, some of the uh, key characters in one of Eric's books that he's created, um, that he managed to you know, 
pull out of um, uh, Mid Journey. So, <clears throat> again, the idea of combining imagination with technology um, is what gives us, you know, these incredible creations that we can pull up out of the machine. That would take you days, if not weeks, to create one of these monsters. And it can happen in less than a minute or two. It's, it's just blows me away. Um, what's really cool is as photographers, we have kind of a um, kind of an edge on people, the average person using uh, the AI, because we understand um, what things like uh, Rembrandt lighting or backlighting is, or um, some of the qualities of light. Um, I know personally, with all my my mastery of lighting uh, as a professional photographer. I can really create this magnificent looking face here um, just by knowing the what what exact um, descriptions I want to feed the machine uh, to get the kind of results that I'm, that I'm looking for. So again, our experience, our knowledge of of, um, of light as a visual uh, artist, as a photographer, uh, greatly helps uh, the quality of output, I think, that we can generate uh, through the AI. So. We can use some of our experience and skills and background and knowledge to enhance our, our, uh, our creations. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, let's see here. This is a lovely old lady. You know, professional color grading, soft shadows, no contrast, clean chart focusing, magazine style, 4K. Isn't she beautiful? I mean, what a, I have like somebody's grandma, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, Okay, here's a, here's a little pop quiz for you guys. What would you tell the AI that you wanted to get an, an image like this? Anybody want to take a stab at it? Oh, what, whiskey bottle, backlight, wooden. Uh, golden liquid. Yeah, yeah, golden, golden color. Good. Woke up background. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that would be the kind of things you would use in a command line. Your command line would say, um, you know, whiskey bottle, backlighting, uh, golden light shining through bottle, uh, wooden uh, table, um, set on a wooden table, uh, bokeh uh, uh, with uh, three bottles, and there you go. And, and notice the, the text, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Always has trouble. <laughs> Okay. I put out something in the chat. I think what the issue we're looking at here is the AI people don't want to get in trouble with Coke or Ford or some other recognizable um, uh, trademark like that because they're trademarks. They're so you're, you're saying it purposely mixes that up? Yeah. Okay. It purposely, it purposely scrambles any kind of text so that they can't have any brand recognition. The last thing they want is somebody generating a um, an AI with a Coke um, logo on it. You know, so that's that's one article I read that made sense to me, and I can sure see the logic of it. Um, and then it's probably also because there's even phrases that are copyrighted, like "live, laugh, yes. love." Exactly. Exactly. So I mean, it opens up a whole legal can of worms if you start showing text um, because of the copyrights. They're very, very clear on that. Um, so again, that's my understanding. And it could just be a quirk of the AI. It just can't do characters. I'm sure they could figure it out. So I think just scrambling text is a good way of covering it, but legally. So fun stuff. All right, so here's, here's a shopping list. If you've got a, if you have a um, a phone handy, uh, take a take a picture of this or, or do a screenshot if you want to do that. If you hold down the, uh, if you're on a PC or a, a Windows machine, if you hold down the Windows key, the Shift key, and the letter S, it'll invoke a screen capture, um, and that you can grab. A little tight tip for you. Um, but anyhow, these are these are a handful that I run across that I find to be. Um, Relatively easy, relatively simple to use. Um, some better than others. Um, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to bounce out of my presentation here for a minute and show you some of these. I've got them up here on my um, 
on my um, screen here. Um, let's look at stable diffusion. The stable diffusion is, is one of the more recognized um, and, and more advanced. It's right up there with, um, uh, with mid-journey as far as the quality of output goes. Um, here is a bouquet of flowers with a silver base that I asked it to draw. Um, tell you what, somebody give me a command line. I'll take a request from the audience here. Um, Anybody want to throw it at me? Come on. 20s model. Um, what, oh what's that model? I'm sorry, say it again. Uh, a, a, a 20s lady in 20s outfit. Um, gosh. Um, what do they call that, that 20s scarf that they would wear? I forget what those are called. Um, Let's try the 20s female and flapper fashion. Let's see what we got. Yeah, yeah, flapper. Let's just take that for, for a ride. And now, the nice thing about stable diffusion, the images come up really fast. It is by far the fastest uh, of the uh, generators that I've seen. The problem with stable diffusion, though, is it's really bad at cropping stuff. It just drives me crazy. You got this lovely lady with her head's chopped off. Yeah. You know, here's another lady and who golf cart had chopped off. Yeah, uh, is it supposed to take uh, the vase of flowers with it and include it? No, no, it wasn't. Oh, oh okay. This is the, uh, the line that Chrissy gave me. Gotcha. Uh, <laughs> why she has this color <laughs> lips? <laughs> we actually got, we got a full body for a change, which is kind of nice <laughs> to do that. Uh, but one of the things that I find really common with uh, stable diffusion is it's cropping is oftentimes pretty bizarre. The images, maybe, though, you'll have to say are really pretty good quality. Maybe you know? if you put full body in the description or, or full, 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 full headshot uh, with shoulders or something. Now, let's see here. Let's take a 20 female in Viper uh fashion. Uh, Full if body. you ask for full body, you'll get Rubens esque. <laughs> Standing in City Street. Mark, with what you're in now, is is this part of the free area or is this a membership yeah. you have for stable? I'm actually in a in a free section right now. I haven't put any money in the stable fees one, but I'm very tempted to though, because they are, like I say, the fastest and potentially some of the best quality. Oh my god. Oh. Oh. Not quite. Oh, this it's worse. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think you have uh, to. Well, <laughs> do, you, do you think that's purpose like, because of the like three? Right? I, I really have no idea. That they don't give you a, a complete figure? You have to say headshot. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Let's uh, let's say um, headshot, 20 female blabber. Somebody put a link to the... Uh, chat uh an article that i saw earlier too on medium well we got two out of four there <laughs> but they aren't headshots though <laughs> so, this is the frustration welcome to ai boys and girls this is how it goes it does it, it gets it gets intentionally creative sometimes there's a good and, uh, do, do crazy cat lady yeah uh, yeah <laughs> Hey, just a quick question. Hey, hey, Mark, hey, Mark yeah. before, before you go, type in 20s lady in 20s, full head shot with shoulders, full body. In 20s? In 20s what? Fashion? In 20s. Nope, just in 20s. 20s, okay. And what else? Full head shot with shoulders, full body. No, you're, that, that's an oxymoron, though. Just, just do it. OK. <laughs> just do it. All right, buddy. Let's see what happens. Does it matter if you put commas in between each descriptor? No, it doesn't. Oh, that's a little mm -hmm. better. But I mean, look at, the, look at the framing on that. Better, you know? fa better faces. That's better for faces. sure. Yeah, yeah oh, I'd say that. Uh, Mark, what, what a wrecking... adding character creation and to get a full body shot. I'm sorry, say it again. The article um, 
This says, talks about how to get the artificial gener um, AI generator to stop cropping off people's heads is to try to add um, character creation. Ah, oh, interesting. Yeah, there's a, oh, here's, here's one of the really, really creepy things, hands. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, look at this poor lady's hands. Would it recognize a, a word like deco? Let me just show you something real quick. One, two, three, four, five, and the thumb makes six. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And look at the shape of these fingers. Yep. My God, she got some really bad arthritis, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Almost, as if, almost as if the human doesn't have hands or something and it doesn't know how to, you know, create that or something. That's strange. Well, yes. it's the the thing they say, whoops, I got too far here. Um, the thing they say about hands and AI is that there's not as many samples of good hands for it to work from. There's lots and lots and lots of faces. There's billions of faces, but very few hands to work from. So that's, yeah. that's the defense that the AI people offer. And they're working on it. It's going to get better. And I'll have to say, even in the probably six weeks I've been playing around with this now, um, I haven't seen better looking hands. You know, it's, it's coming along. Um, but it's still got a ways to go, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm going to show you some kind of creepy looking stuff here in a minute. Um, let's go to something else here. Uh, let's go to, uh, <laughs> where is this? This is, um, this is actually um, a journey. <laughs> so one of the things I was playing with here was, uh, well, let me, let me get back to my to my, um, I'm kind of skipping ahead on that. And I want to make a point of that here in a moment. Let's look back at this. So there's a number of these in here. Um, crayon is probably the one of the worst speed wise. It's slower in hell. It takes like six, seven, eight minutes to generate one image. Whereas you wow. saw what was happening with uh, Stable Fusion, it was just zooming right along. Um, another one is dream.ai. Uh, Dream is a really good source as well. I'm I've been enjoying that. Um, let's see if I can get. Yeah, here it is. Dream is a is based on a piece of software called Wombat or Wombo. I'm sorry, Wombo. <laughs> I'll get this right. Um, and it's it's pretty good um, on some things. The problem is you don't really get into it until you start using uh, the paid version of it. Um, this has a um, has a uh, bunch of like options you can just click and choose from. Um, I said, give me Buffalo Herd on a plane and it gave me uh, this lovely thing here. It's not too bad, but it's still kind of cartoonish looking though. Um, if I said, uh, make it detailed on uh, somebody's phone screen, yeah. um, they make it detailed and make it uh, photo realistic. And I'll make it maybe, I don't know, 4K. Let's just see what that does. And this too is actually a really quick generation as well. You can see it comes up right away. Well, that's not too bad. That's a, a little bit better, but still not photorealistic though. And I'm not sure what this thing is over here. <laughs> Very odd looking yeah. creatures. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not Mark. quite sure what that is. Um, yeah. Did Mid Journey ever cut off heads or anything? Not as badly. In fact, hardly ever. Uh, I had little to no problem with uh, Mid Journey cutting off heads. It does some other creative things, but cutting off and general framing and cropping is pretty clean. Um, so I really haven't seen as much of a problem with that as I have stable fusion. Um, so. Um, Anyhow, so that, that improved the quality somewhat, but it's still kind of lanky looking. If I said, give me a picture of uh, Niagara Falls, okay? Let's just see what it does with that. It usually likes, it likes national landmarks. Uh, I'm gonna show you a sample here in a minute of um, some things from Yosemite that are kind of cool. Um, yeah, so that's a fairly, a fairly good picture of Niagara Falls. Um, because here again, there's billions of pictures of Niagara Falls out there. And that probably, if you, if you know Niagara Falls at all, that probably is not quite how it looks, but it's pretty darn close. 
You notice the uh, background behind me is uh, AI generated. Um, and that was taken from some photographs that I, that I fed into it uh, of Old Town. Um, I said, give me Old Town, give me, uh, give me this image uh, at, uh, with, with springtime blossoms. And that's what it gave me. So pretty crazy. Um, let me see here. The thing about Discord is you can you can go through and look back at all the things you've created. There's my my pictures of the old town image, and you'll notice here in my command line I show a um, um, a link to it uh, to a JPEG, and then I said spring day blossoms. Um, and I said blossoms. And I said had, uh, dot dot two, which meant to um, you can wait. Uh, you can you know, make the weight of an image or a, of a, um, a component of the image uh, more or less. You can change to have more blossoms or less blossoms. Or you can say, I don't want any trees at all in here. So I can say uh, colon, colon, no, and then space and then tree, and all the trees disappear. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can craft things like that and kind of play around with it a bit. I could have said, give it to me with a film camera, with a, with a with film instead of digital. Or I could have said, give me a silver plate and it would have done that. I could have said, give it to me as a um, magazine illustration, as a Ansel Adams photograph. And because it has a lot of, a lot of his photographs and a lot of his images to work with, he would give me a Ansel Adams like picture of Old Town. Wow. Um, so that's kind of cool what you can do in terms of influencing how the outcome looks. Uh, but here again is the, uh, the picture I have from my background here. There's something like one of these here. It's a nice looking picture. And it's pretty, uh, pretty photorealistic compared to some of the other ones we've seen, and which is why MJ kind of stands out. MJ meeting mid journey. MJ is kind of the slang for it. Um, all right. Well, let me get back to the present. Let's see what else do we have here. I have instant art. Uh, Night Cafe is horrible. Uh, I really didn't care for that at all. The results are really wanky and uh, slow. So that's one I just assume not have to even worry about. Um, if you want to just screw around and not have to worry too much about it, um, try this dream.ai. Uh, it's probably one of the simplest interfaces to work with. Um, you can come down here and um, you can upload an image if you want. And then there, once you upload the image, there'll be a slider that says how much do you want that to be the emphasis of the picture. You want a little bit, uh, a, little, uh, a little more, or a lot. It's like a one, two, three scale. So you can check, you can control how much emphasis the generator puts on your JPEG. And you get kind of interesting results out of that. Um, let me see here. Um, dream. So there's a picture of me. So again, it's not exactly a picture of me. But it's sort of like me, only I don't have brown eyes. I have blue eyes. Thank you. <laughs> but you can see how it, you know, kind of did a, a weird thing with it. Um, it did the the brain thing. Uh, here's my little girl. Um, this is one of my pet projects: is trying to get a picture of a young girl um, hugging a unicorn because my granddaughter, who's four years old, just absolutely adores these things. Thinks that unicorns are the coolest things ever. Now, the problem here is look at her eyes. Your eyes are just funky looking. Everything else isn't too bad, but the eyes are crazy. Now, I ran into a problem with, um, with the um, uh, filters on it. The NS, NSFW thing is not suitable for work. That's NS, NS, NSFW, not suitable for work. That's their censorship criteria. So I put into it, I said, Give me a four-year-old girl hugging a unicorn. I went, ah, sorry, it's illegal. You can't ask that. I'm like, what? It's a four-year-old girl hugging a unicorn. What is nasty about that? 
So I just said, young girl uh, hugging a unicorn, and I got this. So for some reason, the NSFW filters thought that me mentioning a four-year-old girl was obscene. <laughs> really? <laughs> so they are pretty paranoid, to say the least. Um, but it keeps people from creeping out, though, I guess, you know, and doing creepy things. Um, <laughs> just for the record. Illegal, you know, AI things like, you know, child yeah. and all that stuff. Exactly. I did bump into a site, which I did not explore very far. Um, but I, was, I said, you know, is there a, uh, a site that allows uh, adult content? And sure enough, up pops a site called Porn Pen. And so, if any of you guys want to explore the DIY world of pornography, there you go. That's going to be our next uh, meetup, right? Oh, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you know, I mean, pornography is a big part of the internet and blah, blah, blah. Um, and a lot of people really enjoy it. So, it had to come up. They had to be a, an engine that would power that that need. And fortunately, it's like most um, uh, artwork of that type. It's isolated from the general public. And um, if you want it, it's there. If you don't, it's it's blocked completely from any of the popular service. So anyhow, enough about that. Get myself in trouble <laughs> talking about things like that. <laughs> All right, where am I here? I've kind of lost track of my. Uh, meet up my um where did my zoom meeting go and mark i apologize my wife called so i missed a tiny bit when you were uploading your own photo and then able to adjust that what tool was that that you were in which one was that was, that? that was in um uh dream, dream in dream app. okay yeah. i'm trying to thank you Trying to get back to my uh, meeting, I can't find. I got too many things open right now. <laughs> I'm lost. Somebody throw me a line. <laughs> so we, we talked about civil diffusion. One thing we haven't talked about is Discord, uh, and Discord's really uh, a very geeked out um, uh, piece of software. Discord is is a communication pipeline that is used by a lot of the um, um, image generators like Wombat um, is one. Uh, the other is, um, where is it? The other is uh, Mid Journey. Now, I'm fortunate enough because I, I know my friend Eric, the author, so well that I kind of have my own little my own little server here that I can play with. And everything on here is things that I've created. Pretty awesome because if you get in the middle of some of the free trial stuff, you end up standing in the middle of a freeway of a lot of traffic, and there's images flying left and right. And trying to keep track of where your image went uh, can be um, a little bit of a uh, trial. You got to really watch it. Um, so when you give a command in, three or four images may go by before your image comes up. So you really have to watch that stream and pull out your piece that you threw in. So the advantage, of course, of having a paid membership, which I have a kind of the mid-level membership here, it's like $30 a month. Um, I can get my own dedicated server and not have to worry about all that traffic uh, wisdom past me. So otherwise, it's kind of a needle in a haystack thing, you know, and it, it can be really frustrating. Uh, right, Bill? <laughs> I think you've uh, you dealt with that. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So... Um, by the way here um let's try uh running a, a quick command here in mj just for the kicks and giggles of it so one of the things that you have to start off with is imagine slash imagine opens up the prompt window and once you have a prompt window then you can go nuts now you can do whatever you want to do so let's let's for, for the fun of it um let's go back to the 20s um let's see here uh, female, let's make it a young female, just for the fun of it. Young, young female, um, um, 20s, uh, let's say 
funny fashion, flapper fashion. Stall right here. Standing in a city street, right? Right. And we're going to make that uh, a photorealistic. And we're going to make it a uh, high detail and 4K. That should be enough. Get the enter key. And good, we're accepted. That's great. <laughs> I didn't get an NSFW uh, uh, stopper on it. It says, hey, you're waiting to start. So you have a couple minutes and all, then it kicks in. And then it starts building it up in layers. Um, and you get, if you notice, this here's like 30%. You see it says up here. And then it'll jump from 30 up to 60%. And then from 60% up to, you can do it 90%. And she's looking pretty damn good, isn't she? Mm -hmm. That's a good looking, good looking lady there. A whole lot better than we got from the other one, right? <laughs> that was uh, that was pretty atrocious. Yeah, for sure. Yes, here we have a, a very pretty lady dressed in appropriate attire. Um, and you notice the cars in the background are probably 20s era uh, cars. Looks like over here, looks like it's kind of hard to see it, but it looks like an appropriately old car. Um, and so, um, you know, a, a really useful piece. Now, here's where it gets interesting with MJ. If I said, okay, I like, I don't know, maybe number four here would be my favorite one. You guys all agree with that? They're all really good. So if I went back here, there's um, some commands underneath here that says use and Vs. Well, use are to upscale it. Right now, this is a 512 pixel square, so it's tiny. Um, I could take this and open it in the browser and get a slightly larger version of it this way. And then I could do a right click and you know do the old save image as thing. Or better yet, um, oops, I can go back to my screen here and I can upscale number four. And that means it's going to give me back a 1024 by 1024 image because I, I didn't tell to give me a different uh, aspect ratio. You can tell to give you a two by three or a three by four aspect ratio if you want, um, or four by three or three by four, depending if you want horizontal or, or uh, portrait. Um, but in a moment here, uh, our pretty lady will pop up in full resolution. So, but it takes about a minute for it to generate um, a, uh, a up, upscale. Now, V down here um, stands for versioning. So let's, while we're waiting for that to happen, we'll hit version. And what it's going to do is take the basic information from this image here and use what they call the same seeds for it. Here she is. Um, and by seeds, we're talking about the, the images that are referenced to create this image. Um, and so let's see here. So you can see here on this one, we have four similar images, but if we look carefully at the background, it's not the same. So if I got an image that I liked and I wanted to just refine it a little bit, um, this is a fabulous tool for doing that with. Uh, it's a really, um, it's really a, a, a way of taking something you like and making it even better. Um, and then if we get back to our full scale gal here, um, I can right click on her and tell her to save image as. And um, let's see here, it's covering up some of my stuff here. Um, put her over in the uh, mid journey stuff and call it my uh, 20s female to the street. And there she is. That's how I save a piece of work that way. Now she's still not quite photorealistic. She still has kind of an illustrated look to her. Um, and there's a couple of more commands I could invoke that would make it look a little bit more realistic. Um, but all in all, it's a very usable uh, image to play with. Um, so any any questions so far on, on MJ? 
I mean, there's a billion questions you can ask me, but anything obvious that I can quickly try to answer for you? So when you get this one that's not very photorealistic, then um, how do you play with it to make it more photorealistic then? There's, there's just other, other commands that I can invoke. <clears throat> if you remember uh, back in some of Eric's code, he had all kinds of descriptors in there. Right. And I could, I could, you know, go back to a couple of his strings and, and grab some of the descriptors off of that and have fun with it. So that can be done. Um, there's also a thing in here called settings that I can open up. And under settings, there's different versions of MJ that have evolved along. Oh, well, we got five now. Oh my gosh, where did I come from? That's something brand new. Yeah. The version five on finally went live. Uh, I'm anxious to try that. Um, and then I can talk about, you know, quality and I can use a base quality or I can use high quality, uh, just cost me twice as much to do it. Um, and the stylizing means that uh, it will literally add a whole lot more variables to what you uh, are working with. Um, and then you want in fast mode or relax mode, it kind of controls how fast the image is generated. Remix mode is done for combining like two JPEGs. Uh, and that could be really interesting. I haven't had a lot of luck with it, but I want to explore that a little bit more and see what, what I can come up with. So let's take, um, let's see here. Well, let's take, take, take something new here. Anybody want to offer me a, a prompt? Mm -hmm. Great, crazy cat lady. <laughs> oh, yeah, you want to try that one? Oh, you're a brave man. <laughs> 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 okay, we got a crazy cat lady. And I also cranked up stylized to four. So this is gonna be really fun. We'll see what this comes up with. This is gonna be crazy in hell. <laughs> or, or, or you could say Italian stallion riding a stallion horse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you could probably do that, yeah. <laughs> I did high fructose corn syrup uh, just before the meeting here. Oh my God, look at this. Oh, ah. gonna be great. <laughs> this is going to be fun. <laughs> oh man. A giant cat on the sofa. Oh, this is. Oh, good Lord. Oh my God. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay. Beautiful. There we are. The crazy oh, cat. My goodness. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I like these two over here are really fun, aren't they? Oh, man. <laughs> so, I think and Bill's these have never been generated before. Huh? No, these are these are unique art, four completely unique art forms. Wow. Yeah. Nuts, huh? Yeah. Now, what's interesting, the cats actually look pretty normal. Uh, I've done like three dogs and two cats on a couch. Because that's what I have. I've got three dogs and two cats. And it gave me some of the weirdest looking stuff we've ever seen. The animals have very bizarre looking faces. Oh my God, they were just crazy. <laughs> Let's. I'm so, how did you get? Because some of yours have been very photorealistic. How did you get those versus, and then uh, other times it creates this bizarre face? I mean, look at, look at this cat here and this cat here. Yeah. Right. And even this cat up here, and they are just pretty darn weird looking at critters, you know. <laughs> They're sort of kind of cat like, maybe. <laughs> right now, the cats over here on this uh head full of hair, full, head full of uh, cats isn't too bad until you look carefully at the yellow and the green one. <laughs> They're <laughs> kind of like <laughs> What do we have here? Um, these actually look really good. Well, the one in the left, bottom left, is a bit strange. Well, yeah, I haven't seen too many green cats. Um, but but the one on the, the bottom right is really. These aren't bad at all. This cat, cat. this cat here in the bottom left is kind of weird. But the rest of them actually look pretty good. And the lady's a little bit cross-eyed, you see that? Or wide. Yeah. Her eyes aren't quite lined up right now. Yeah? No. Um, 
So, I mean, welcome to AI. AI is not perfect, but it's damn creative. I've got to get a credit for that. It's, it produces some incredible stuff that just will blow your brains out. Um, so it's a, it's a hoot and a half. So back to Discord. Discord is works strictly on command lines, like you see me typing things in here. And there are literally thousands of command line uh, prompts that you can play with um that will change and manipulate and, and alter the way things look um in ways that you just can't imagine sometimes um but that's part of the techno artist aspect of it that's what's so exciting for me as an artist as a creative person is that i have the chance to really control well try to control <laughs> what this crazy machine's doing you know uh, it, can be, it can be pretty amazing so anyhow, fun stuff. So let me see if I can let me see if I can find my uh, Zoom. <laughs> no, that's not it. Um, what was that one image you had put on Facebook uh, weeks back? Uh, I'm trying to remember something having to do with water i think and um or maybe beer and something else and it was very photorealistic and it was like wow oh i had the uh, the lightning going through the glass of beer oh yeah yeah that's yeah that was, was really fun that was great um and I, I just said lightning and beer i just it was really a simple command line and that popped up and going, yes, I like it. <laughs> so that was, uh, was pretty incredible. Yeah. So let me get back to my slide just for a moment longer. I put some effort into building this thing. I want to get the end of it. <laughs> just, you got to listen to this, okay? You have to. <laughs> ah, good grief. Um, let's see here. So here's a couple of samples that I ran through different um, different engines to see how they come out. And this is my good buddy Mid Journey. So he gave me some gave me some flowers uh, and a metal base, um, but I did ask it for a garden background, and didn't do a very good job of that. This the big shot here sort of has a model highly out of focus background of, of something green back there. But the rest of these here have really plain backgrounds, even though I asked for a garden background. So the photorealism is awesome. These are beautiful flowers, but it missed out on the background command. Stable fusion, on the other hand, gave me less detailed flowers, but it gave me the right background, at least on a couple of these here. So again, some kind of the pros and cons. It's just like any kind of a creative process, you got to know your tools and what your tools are good at and what they're not so good at. It's like, you know, being a carpenter and knowing which saw to use um, or which screwdriver to use or what power tool to use um, to get the job you want done right. So again, this is really, uh, there's some pretty images here, um, but they're not quite what I wanted. Right. Dream AI, Wombo, did an okay job. But just not as detailed by any means. Um, it it overexposed the whites on these flowers. Oh my god! <laughs> is it better <laughs> if you? Knows that. Is it better if you give if you say you know roses or pink roses? Oh yeah. It, you know what I mean, like more descriptive. I just gave it a random bouquet of flowers, so it, it wasn't real specific on that. So I, I didn't uh, didn't quite hit it. But this image here probably is the best, I think, in terms of the background, yeah. the overall quality of the image. Uh, I kind of like that one. Yeah. Now, back to censorship. So images on all the main services are heavily censored for any kind of references to sex, nudity, violence. Politicians, though, are OK, as my dear friend Dr. <laughs> says. Um, but you notice the tank without a barrel? You see that? Wow. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Hmm. So um, it gets it gets to be kind of strange uh, what it will accept and what it won't accept. I 
always kind of curious about that. Again, the fact that it wouldn't give me a four-year-old girl is amazing. Uh, I saw an article that said, don't try to, you can put in a crying baby, but don't put a, a baby crying blood. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, just to give you an example of, you know, the distinctions, don't, don't try to draw a picture of a voluptuous woman. It won't do it. <laughs> what about, get through the filter. What about uh, toddlers playing uh, at a water park or something? Yeah, I, you know, I'm getting this, all kinds of ways. Part of the part of the skill of, of working with these AIs is to uh, wordsmith around them, mm -hmm. avoid whatever predefined traps they have. So, um, anyhow. I'm going to kick it on my friend Donald here. <laughs> oh, boy, I can think of all kinds of things I can throw him into. <laughs> and then, and then if, I, if I do it right, I can get a photorealistic and say, a photorealistic copy of this and say, look what Donald's doing. <laughs> and that's how you create all this misinformation, you know? So, uh, anyhow, we get to see how we can manipulate images and say whatever you want to say. In whatever context you want to say it in, you know, we can create that for you. Uh, so I took a picture of my, my little dog here, Kirby, and said, Kirby is kind of a little prince. He's just a prince-like personality. So why not make him into a prince? <laughs> and so I, I took the, uh, the JPEG of him. Now, the part of the trick of working with um, Discord and I got to give my friend Bill a little bit of credit here for um, giving me some, a little bit more insight into this. Is that, let me see here, where are we at? Um, my R is in the way. Okay. So I just put in test. Test. And then I hit the plus symbol here. And it says, hey, you want to upload a file? I'm going, yeah, I'd love to. Thank you. So I got a little file and I can come over here and uh, go to my, um, where are they? Huh. Okay. So I had some in here. Huh. That's better. Well, let's just take a picture of my eagle here. And give it a second, and in a moment here, come on, there it is. There's my eagle. So hit the enter key now, and it goes, there's my eagle. Yay. So I can right click on this, and I want to, um, is it copy link, Bill? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, copy link. And then I can come over here down to my command line and type in imagine, which is in the prompt. And I can paste in that um, that that link, that, that link I just copy off this by going to right click and copying the, uh, the image link and drop it in here. And what should I do with this? What would be fun to do with my eagle? Any ideas? Mm. Eagle playing with lightning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, am I spelling it right? Light. Like, 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 there we go. One moment, please. And let's see what it comes up with. This is a this is a complete crap roll. I mean, just a dice roll. You never know what you're gonna get. And it can be super cool and it can be super terrifying. <laughs> you know, the, the uh the uh you're you're playing the odds, you know. Wow, this is gonna look really strange looking. Wow, those are really yeah, that is what the hell is, what the hell is that? It's some guy. Is it <laughs> it's a man? With this, you got arms, yeah, nice. yeah. Oh, you got God. a ferret, a ferret in there. I, 
I don't know. I don't. You you misspelled lightning, so I don't know if that makes the deal. Well, we got lightning. We've got the lightning. Yeah, it figures out. And we have. Um, oh. Maybe you, maybe you need to say photorealistic. <laughs> this is uh, this guy here is uh, is kind of interesting. It really is. I think my favorite one probably is the top right one. It looks more like a bird than anything. But you know, where does angry this screeching hey. bird? Oh my god, right. that is wild, man. Yeah. So again, welcome to AI. This is what AI does. So if we said, if I hit this button here, it's going to rerun that same command line, and let's just see what happens. So we got one really crazy ass thing that came up here. Right. Let's see what another pass will do, and. You know, I've hit the, the, the regenerate button four and five and six times to get volume of something that I can use. Um, it's because, oh my God, what are we going to oh, here? Wow. We got a monkey? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> wow. We're 60%. Wait a minute. It's getting better. 90%. When you did lightning and beer, did you have to redo that one or did it come out really awesome the first time? I got really, really lucky on that one. So I'm not sure what the heck this thing up here in the right hand corner is. Uh, like. but, the, but the other three are actually kind of neat. Maybe, maybe you need to say calm eagle <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with lightning um, or something. something like that. Yeah, yeah. Well or calm so eagle flying with lightning. But but your photo has its mouth open. So that photo <laughs> is becoming part oh. of the prompt. Yeah, so here's the here's the original photograph here that we got. Do you have an eagle with a closed mouth? <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe you might have to dig for it. <laughs> no, that what one that you took though. Yeah. Yeah, I can even go out, you know, I could go out to uh, images at Google and say, you know, give me an eagle here. And there is a more a more sedate eagle. Yeah. Come over here and say, uh, copy the image address. You see that? Oh. So that would be another way of getting uh, an image in here. This may or may not work. I've had mixed results with this. Um, and so oh, I, I, no, I don't want to do that. Um, I have the image. Uh, so we go imagine. Now, the thing that's critical on this is that it ends with JPG. Yeah. You may have this big long URL, but it's gotta have a, a JPG at the end in order to be the actual image address. Uh, oh, let's see here, L-I-G-H-T-E-N-I-N-G. No, 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 L-I-G-H-T-N-I-N-G. T-H-T. And then Ning, N-I-N-G. Here we go. Okay. L-I-G-H-T. Right. And then and I, Okay, hit it. <laughs> Let's see what happens here. Now, what's interesting is, is it changed it to its own internal server's uh, reference to it. This is not the same reference we got from Google. So it actually stored it in its own little brain and then created an internal reference to it. So I, I find that kind of, a, kind of an interesting phenomenon. So is it thinking? Yeah, where do you start? Where does it say that? Uh, oh, I see. Okay. Where do you start? So these are pretty crazy looking images, but you know, you can see what happens. Again, I'm, I'm just kind of walking you through the creative process um, of what it takes to create and I mean, create an image like this. Um, we got a backlog. So what this is telling me that there's a lot of traffic right now on the servers, um, which this time of night doesn't surprise me at all, um, especially with the West Coast kicking in and you know it's like five o'clock there. Wow. So sometimes this can get pretty slow. Usually, as you've been seeing all along here, we've been popping along at a pretty good clip. Um, it's taking no more than a minute to generate. And then you hit a traffic jam. 
and you go get a cup of coffee <laughs> or a beer or whatever you're into um, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, chill out for a couple minutes, wait for it to generate. So I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll get a beep when that comes up. Um, let's get back to the, um, back to our resolution program here. It, can you do something not from a photo where there would be less of a traffic jam or no? no? It's okay. It just occasionally you get a generation problem. So back to my friend Caribbean being a being a you know the big dog here. Um, did the same thing here with uh, Queen Izzy. Uh, Kathy, I think you're on the line right now. Um, I took this photo from my friend Kathy Colby, and she said she saw the Kirby thing. Said, "Oh my God, Mark, you've got to do Izzy." And I said, "Okay, okay, okay." <laughs> okay. So this is a commissioned art piece here. Um, <laughs> So, but the funny thing is, though, is that you notice that as photographers, this is not a very good image. It's kind of murky, you know? It's not really well defined. So let's throw this image into Photoshop and clean it up a little better. So that's, you know, it's, it's still an image. And as photographers, we should know how to clean up a mucky looking image like that. And so, I mean, I've done this on several of the images I've gotten back from AI. Um, and, you know, enhance it, patch some things that look kind of funny, uh, you know, clone some things out that really belong there, um, and just generally cleaned up with the AI kind of screwed up. Um, the core image is beautiful. It's a really cool image. Um, and I think, I think Kathy was really happy with that. Um, so fun shot. Now, same thing here. Uh, we took a, um, uh, Kathy's daughter is, um, Want to be a mermaid. And so I didn't quite get the full backstory on that, but I said, sure, I can do that. And I turned her into a mermaid. So fun stuff you can do with the AI. It's just really a, it's really a kick and a half to play with. This, however, took about 30 passes. This thing, I just I went round and round and round and round and round and round, and round with this guy. Uh, I'll show you one in a moment that's pretty funny. Um, here's my granddaughter, and here's what I want to, where I want to create a picture of her with her beloved uh, unicorns. Well, I don't know what the hell happened to her arm. It looks like she had a bad accident. And it's got all <laughs> casted up here. Um, on, uh, on this upper right one, uh, we got horns where there should be ears. You know, pretty bizarre. Whoops. Uh, on this one, it's not too bad. It's pretty sweet. But look at her hands. Oh, my God. Child, her hands mutated. Well, <laughs> yeah, but her face still isn't that great, though. On there, in the face, your eyes especially are a little weird. But the eyes, the eyes on the upper right one here are pretty cool. That one looks pretty normal. Um, but then the lower right one here is, uh, you know, it's sort of okay, but it's still a little weird. Anyhow, you get the idea. Yeah. So sometimes things can get scrambled and distorted. <laughs> like, I don't know what breed of horse this is, but it's freaking weird. <laughs> what was your command for that one? Uh, I said Walter White uh, riding a horse. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, pretty, pretty crazy. So, anyhow. Um, and then we got, um, I, I fed it this image. This is actually one of my photographs okay. and fed it into um, into uh, mid, mid journey. And it did some really strange things on this top left one here. Yeah, it was kind of cool. I could live with that. But where the hell did the flower come from? And more importantly, where did this bottle with the flower coming out of it come from? Or the bottle with the flower floating inside of it come from? <laughs> Honest to God, AI is truly creative i don't care if it's a computer or not Bart, yeah. does it does it remember things you've done in the past and, no. and per, perhaps uh pulls pulls those out it does not it oh, does okay. not it has no memory at all because in the uh, past you've done flowers you've done bottles and and uh just wondering yeah. if it's drawing on well you know like uh ser searching for an uh, item and in the next couple of days i'll get a hundred items uh, exactly the same thing yeah, but you uh, saw the crazy stuff that it did, like with the eagle back here, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, where did this crazy monster come from? You know, this lower left. Right. Hand. 
Well, that's could, be, could be a little well, wild cat. Uh, that's why I was asking the question. I don't know, man. Does it, uh, does it dip back and say, oh, he's asked for wild cat lady before or, <laughs> or something like that? You know, Jim, that's entirely possible. I'm not going to say it's not, but to the best of my knowledge, uh, each, each line is, is unique in its own. Uh, I don't think it really has much of a history to it. But but you know how, how it works. If I uh, look up under Google for a garden furniture for the next two weeks, I'll be I'll be looking at garden yeah. furniture. And that's and, that's just browsing history. That's a whole different story. Exactly. Uh, here's yeah. our eagle that we stole from Google uh, in the lightning storm. That's pretty neat. Yeah. Those are kind of cool looking images, you know. Yeah, on the on the right, I think are pretty pretty neat. Yeah, yeah, they're right. So um getting back to my weird bottle and the and this here. Oh, this is this is my mermaid. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know where this dude came from, but he snuck in the back door somewhere. <laughs> I'm throwing it back, uh, I think, Mark. Yeah, yeah, he's he's not a keeper. I'm sorry, buddy. You're, you're kind of cute. Not what I, it's not what I was I was uh, baiting for, you know. <laughs> what if what if you tried lightning and beer right now? Oh, 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 your poor puppy. My poor puppy. My God, wow. alien life form for sure. I mean, he's on the left. <laughs> respect. Mm -hmm. uh, holy, holy the left man. bottom is Lovecraft. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> that was some pretty wild stuff. Now, this poor photographer, I think he's been in a bar. I think he's been in a bar fight the night before because his eyes all swollen up. <laughs> and then he has the most interesting fingers down here on his hand. Uh, right. Right. Hmm. Like poor man's got some kind of birth defect, you know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So um, the AI doesn't always do what you tell it to. Here's the command line. And the command line says, give me a Viking in a leather shirt with a Viking helmet on a Viking ship, stormy, ultra detail photo quality two version four. Okay, what happened to the ship? Wow. What happened to the storm? Hmm. Uh, the, the faces aren't too bad. Um, this gentleman here owns a um, a uh, beard product company called uh, Viking Naturals. So Viking Naturals is the name of his company. So I, I met him at the uh, Lumberjack Festival here recently, um, and I said, "Hey Neil, you're gorgeous, man. I love this this uh, this collar thing he had on, and he's got a beautiful beard, and he he looked like a Viking, you know." I said, yeah. "Let me see what the AI AI could do with you." So I fed, I fed this image here, uh, which, by the way, I did a cutout on because there's a bunch of stuff in the background that was causing problems. Um, and so I did a cutout and just isolated his pretty face and then fed it to the machine. And the machine came up with these guys. Oh, yeah. going, well, you know, they're kind of cool looking, Good. except I'm missing my boat. I missed the boat here. <laughs> <laughs> and the stormy, yeah. yeah. And the storm. The storm seems to laugh a little bit, you know? <laughs> well, the sky's, the sky's gray. I haven't seen it. Yeah, the sky's kind of gray, I guess, but you know, I don't see any rain or waves or you know. So back to the drawing board of that one. Let's see if I can do it with him. All right, so where are we at here? So the cool thing is that it does some really neat art emulations. It imitates art. And these beautiful ladies are just gorgeous. I love these ladies. You know, they're imagine. Smiling, beautiful woman holding flowers in sharp focus in a sketch format and a, uh, a dimensions of four by five. Wow, beautiful, huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. So these are, this is what it does right. Or I can say, give me imagine a smiling, beautiful woman holding flowers in sharp focus with an oil painting, Van Gogh style. Wow, these look like classic Renaissance, you know, paintings. One in the lower left here, especially, is really cool looking. I like her a lot. Um, so you can we can take the same basic command line and just turn it from a sketch into a painting. Wow, isn't that fun? Hmm. 
Um, and you can emulate, I could have made this, uh, you know, uh, any any famous painter I wanted to. I could have put a Dolly or, or Picasso, gotten a really crazy ass one, which I think the AI definitely wants to kind of lean towards more Picasso-like things, <laughs> given that poor picture of Kirby we saw. <laughs> uh, so it tends to be one, it wants to distort, but it can also give you phenomenal real looking stuff too, which is great. Now this is kind of fun for those of you that are my my landscaping friends. Here's um, here's El Capitan, um, the famous rock in uh, California in the San Luis Park, and we can show a picture of it um, in summer. We can show a picture of it in the fall, uh, or we can show a picture of it in winter. Mm -hmm. Neat, huh? Mm -hmm. And I could probably take a photo. And it may not be quite so accurate, but a, a photo would be kind of interesting too. Like the pictures I did of Old Town, you know, I did with the uh, the blossoms. Um, I also tried that with a winter uh, to see what it would do with with a, with a winter command, and it produced some kind of cool looking stuff. So this is where you can change uh, an existing landscape uh, and you know morph it into something different. But this is kind of neat, though. You know, the fall, summer. Again, it likes it likes you know widely recognized you know scenic spot. There's been a billion and multi-billion pictures taken of El Capitan. Um, the same as like Niagara Falls, you know, it, it loves those kind of things because they're very commonly used. So hey, I'm doing good on time. Wow, it's exactly 8:30. How do I do that? So we've just just scratched the surface of this new class of techno art. And again, technology-based art forms what we're looking at here. Um, you know, I would say one source that there's 11 million possible commands, holy moly's. Um, I wanna offer another class through Modern Student Smarter Picks. Hopefully you've enjoyed this presentation this evening with Bill and I. Um, I wanna do a class on the 30th, uh, like from 6.30 to 8.30. Uh, on quality control, a um, little more advanced integration of images and blending, uh, lighting and mood controls, um, output styles, special effects, and whatever else pops up that sounds interesting. Um, but just as sort of a second class and maybe even a third or even fourth class, there's so much to, to learn and, and master in this area. And yeah, you can watch the YouTubes and there's all kinds of little YouTubes out there. Um, but an actual class can sometimes be better, in my humble opinion. <laughs> uh, so hopefully I'm more, a little bit more interesting and more entertaining than a, a static uh, video is going to be. So go to WorksMarterPicks.com uh, event site. And um, I don't have it up there yet. I've been being too busy the last couple of days preparing for this class. Um, but I'll have something up in there by tomorrow. Um, if you're interested, uh, please check in, check that out. And of course, tutoring. Uh, one on one is always an option too. Just call me. So, um, if you want to hang out for all, oh, this is fun. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> well, three very different, uh, you know, taking the same subject and and making it you know, three different uh, three different looks to it. So, if you want, we can spend the next you know fifteen minutes or so, whatever you have time for. Uh, we can go back to MJ or any of the any of the tools if you want to take a look at um, and uh, run a couple more command lines and see what happens. If you're up for that, stick around. Uh, if you've had enough of this nonsense and want to take a break and go get some sleep, I don't blame you. Um, and hopefully, you've all enjoyed the show. Hey, Mark, this was uh, this was really cool. I appreciate it. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, here. Your, your next class your next class is during spring break <laughs> so i'll be off oh, is it really and won't be able to oh, look at that well, I, mean, I can probably move the date then i didn't realize spring break was at that time frame so what a week before or a week after what would be better for you yeah it's that week so would a week after that be okay or um, the week after I would at that point I have to check with my wife and calendar. Seven. I just know the thirtieth is definitely a no. <laughs> yeah, well, I appreciate the insight, and I'll I'll move the date then. 
because uh, I, I don't want to be in the middle of spring break. That's a, an anomaly that we don't want it to be with. Um, for those of you who have the, the benefit of spring break, <laughs> not everybody has that. Uh, but yeah, certainly it makes sense if you have a family or if you're working around schools and to have a have that time. Mark, hey. I'm gonna I'm gonna say good night now. Hey, Bill. Well, again, thanks for your effort and time on this. You've been a huge fun to meet you. You're welcome. Thanks to everybody who came and put up with us. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Bill. All right. Hey, Wesley, I wanted to ask you, uh, you were uh, talking about setting up the server. Have you made any more progress with that, Wesley? Uh, it's uh, on its, you know, well, the, the um, T40 is on its way. Um, so yeah, I, I'm still looking up uh, stuff about uh, you know, the, the actual putting together of the system. So uh, I expect to you know, have some pieces to play with uh, next week, but you know, getting, getting things uh, all well, uh, put together. together. Yeah, I can do anything I can to help you out with it. Uh, I'm pretty skilled in, with computers, and um, I'm sort of getting a lot better at knowing this stuff. Wesley, by the way, is an IT professional and uh, has talked to me about uh, setting up a server that would host um, some of this stuff. So um, we'll see where that goes. I appreciate yeah. your taking it on. Uh, well, yeah, it's this whole thing I didn't really pay a whole lot of attention to with the chat GPT uh, oh, yeah. moniker. Yeah, I was just thinking chatbot technology, but early this year, a friend of mine started talking about how he was using generative AI to as essentially a coding assistant uh, and ran across yeah. stuff on Twitter about, um, you know, how, hey, you know, I'm doing machine learning, I'm using uh, chat GPT to assist me in coding, and anybody that isn't using AI effectively can't be competitive. And it's like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, I gotta gotta look into this. So that's the scary thing. We got we got uh, the 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 chat bots actually writing computer code. Wow, that's oh, that's incredible. And, think about the implications of that. And GPT four, which just dropped, is much much better than the three point five. Uh, I have code going back uh, to a project in acoustics. Uh, so there's a uh, common uh, programming system called MATLAB. And I had this little routine. I said, you know, I want a translation to Python. I tried that with the 3.5, and it did about a quarter of the job. Um, the GPT 4 uh, spit out the entire thing, you know, in uh, Python idiom. And the, the kind of scary thing about it is that I fed it uh, a stripped down, you know, no comments, uh, variables only had two characters to them thing. So it, it looks uh, pretty rough to, you know, as a human looking at it. I asked ChatGPT to explain it, and it said that this uh, provides the derivatives of motion of a two-dimensional mass brain system. And that was exactly right. Was well, it your way over my head, buddy? Way over my head. But um, <laughs> I appreciate your, um, your technical skills. I really do. I'm, I just activated the uh, uh, MJ5, which I've never seen before. So we're going to take a mutual look here and see what, um, what MJ5 does with this version 5 as opposed to version 4. Uh, with our eagle and the um, and the lightning, so I'm kind of curious to see what happens here. It's coming up slowly but surely, but um, it'll be fun to see what it does. So, yeah. is anybody else? Let's see who else is still online here. Got okay, like ten people. That's good. Um, yeah, we had 32 people signed up for the, uh, showed up tonight. We had about 40 sign up for it, and the fact that 32 showed up, I'm extremely happy with that. That's a great turnout. So let's see what we have here with our eagle and the, and the lightning. Yeah, uh, this like is this whole technology is going to be so disruptive of everything. It's uh, really yeah, incredible. 
Well, the, this product that Microsoft's putting out with a combination of uh, the generative AI and the chat GPT, wow, that's, oh my God, that's beautiful. Look at that. Wow. Compared to the, um, compared to the first version we had. But that is really phenomenal. Yeah. I don't see as much lightning though, is the only thing. Right. So um, what I can do here is go back to that line. Um, Several bolts of lightning or something? Well, I can put in a... Uh, lightning storm? Oh. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to emphasize it. Let's see here. Oh, it's lightning. Let's see, I'm doing this wrong. Um, one point. Let's give it a. Let's give it a three. Let's see what happens here. What's What's the colon colon? Um, it says emphasize it by three times. Oh. I think <laughs> by member right. And you came up with. Oh, it it. it transliterated that maybe there needed yeah. to be no space between lightning and the, your double colons. Maybe so. You said the double colon means to and emphasize that. something three times. Yeah. Doesn't... Make it three times the emphasis in the, in the structure of it. So oh. what's, what are you thinking I should do? Here? Uh, don't, don't put a space, put the two colons right there and there are okay. three. Right after lightning? Yeah. Then we'll try, try the three now. There. Okay. That worked. Be Good. Because Good it, it, it was trying to do an emoji because yeah. you have the space. Some kind of clock thing. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what about the one bottom? It says waiting to start, but then the one on top says 62%. Oh, uh, it's no. generating. The, the one, 62%. It isn't quite done. See, it's 78 now. Right. Mm -hmm. But I mean, what's the one at the bottom? What was that? It, it's, is it this making one, two different versions a, of it? This is a, we, we, yeah, we did it twice. Okay. So we're 93%. <laughs> Bald eagle in the window. <laughs> wow. In the window, yeah. Fact, I didn't say anything about the background. Right. It just made up the background. Okay. Well, it's still it's not very much lightning. Yep. No. Before you said playing with lightning. And now that's it's it. just adding lightning. So maybe that's why it put in weird. You know, maybe, oh, I, I, it all maybe, weird. maybe you need to say big lightning bolts or something. Let me. Um, this is my little note sheet here. Here. Yeah. All right. Well, anyhow, still interesting though. But there is a way that you can, um, maybe some kind of weird flare thing down here. Where the hell is that coming from? Looks like a light leak on a camera, on a film camera. <laughs> <Right. Yep. laughs> it looks like a, like a film light leak. <laughs> these are, um, but they are pretty cool looking. Though. I, I got to say, these are looking pretty neat. Mm -hmm. hey, look at the look at the details on the feathers on that, and that's just on the on the the draft iteration. Um, if I regenerated that, it would be even more amazing. It's just weird because it's like the lightning is just like it's not really lightning. It's more oh. like someone drew in. Yeah, it just it's just kind lines. Of, yeah. So um, anyhow, you get the idea. Um, I wonder if you used your original one, lightning and beer, if it would. Generate. Oh, Chris, you've been obsessing on that. Let me. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see here. Frothy glass of beer. 
and L I G H T N I N G. Yep. Is that right? Yep. And then we're going to make that uh, detailed and uh, photorealistic. I can't type here when anybody's watching me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> Let's get our, our lightning glass of beer here. I sent my friends at Ozone Brewery a, uh, a image of a uh, leprechaun uh, drinking a glass of beer. <laughs> they thought it was pretty fun. Then I said another client of mine has a liquor store, uh, a picture of a leprechaun uh, walking through a liquor store uh, with a six pack in his hand. So mm -hmm. that was pretty fun. They like that. So those are some, you know, some of the potentially monetizing potential for this is if I can do things for clients like that. Um, those, those were just tests. I, I still not doing well with lightning. Wow. No, it's not. I mean, it's a good-looking glass of beer, but do you, it's, it's not do you have to say lightning bolts or something, or? Are we sure it's only lightning, right? No, that's that's not. That lightning has no e in it. <laughs> yeah. Like that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's what I thought I did. Let's see here. Um, mm, 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 mm. Oh, what? That's uh. Oh, I put the lightning inside. Oh, inside it! Oh, crazy! Lightning storm in your beer. Oh my! <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll take a tall one of those, please. <laughs> that one especially. That was only the coolest one yet. Wow! Uh, Is that like fun or what? Huh? Your original one came out. Fab. Yeah, that was definitely uh, way better than those. But yeah, it's interesting how it just it's kind of like an artist. Like some days they, you know, we have great art, and then other days it's like, you know what, hang it up. It's yeah, not working for you today. And it's almost like AI is the same way. Yep. Lightning stretch. Oh, lightning background. Okay. Let's see what that does. <laughs> well, we'll see. Guys. I don't mean to keep you up here. You know, this is uh, this is getting later and later. Um, but you get the idea of what's going on. Is there any other uh, one of these generators you want to take a look at before I sign off here? We've got Instant Art. We've got uh, there's Discord. Um, there's um, which one is this? That's just a preview. Okay. Um, there's Dream, which I think Dream is, is a fun, easy one to play around in. I would recommend that if you want to just do it for the kicks and not worry about knowing much. <clears throat> Instant Art isn't too bad, but it's slower now. Um, and then uh, that's all I have active right now. Think of all, all of those uh, <clears throat> websites again. Say again. Can you show the link of all the websites? Um, maybe. <laughs> Let's okay. see. Let me go back up to uh, here. There. Yeah, just grab a screenshot of that, or take a picture of that with your um phone. And there's there's lots more out there. There's just all kinds of them that exist. Um, there and there's more every day. But these seem to be, if you go like to uh, one of the sites, this is what's the top 10 uh, AI um, art sites. Um, these seem to be the ones that um, they keep showing up. And these are the ones that I personally have tried so I can personally comment and or endorse some of these. Most of them are not very expensive, but just for a basic trial, they can be anywhere from seven to $12 a month, which is not a lot of money. And that's, Pretty reasonable for all the to all the power you're getting and all the creative tools that they allow you access to. I mean, you think of the phenomenal amount of R and D has gone into these things. Um, you know, if it only costs you seven, ten, twelve bucks a month for it, boy, I'd, I'll pay that all day long. You know. Yeah. Apparently, training the GPT three 
model took over 400,000 megawatt hours of electricity. Oh, good Lord. Yeah. Wow. So that's a lot of computing power. That's a lot of, a lot of comp computing, yeah. comp a, lot of, a lot of compiling. Yeah, it's huge. I mean, I, what little I know about programming, I just shake my head and go, wow, cool guys. <laughs> <laughs> You know, people like you us with the new code, I just have infinite respect for it. My stepson is a, uh, is a software developer and works on DARPA products. Um, and he's, he's a, a genius when it comes to writing code. Hmm. He starts talking about like you were a few minutes ago, Wes, and, and I just gloss over and go, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so everybody got, got a shot of this? Yep. yep. All good. All right. Yep. Thanks, Thanks so very much. much, Mark. Yeah. Well, it's been a, I did a, it's been a, a really a fun thing to share this with you guys to kind of evangelize the power of AI. You know, right. um, it's a it's a hoot to do that. So, well, I could hopefully enlighten and inspire some of you, and you know, spend the next uh, next few evenings, weekends, uh, hanging out with my AI friends here and. Again, if I can be some more help or support to you, uh, watch the uh, watch for some more classes. Um, the first one's free. <laughs> uh, they only charge thirty bucks for a two-hour class, so it's not a bad deal, um, and it can be a lot of fun. Hopefully, you're, expand. You know, you're doing something tomorrow night, right? Tomorrow night. I don't know, I don't know what's happening tomorrow night. But, I don't know. There's something on there on the sixteenth. On where? I'll meet up, I'll meet up. Uh, on your um, Smarter Picks class. Yeah, see, the problem is I offer a lot of classes that don't, don't get registrations for them. Um, and that's really the immense frustration I have is that, you know, I offer a lot of things, but I have a hard time getting students to sign up for it. So even though I have a class tomorrow night, um, I would be real surprised if anybody's signing, signing up for it. What, 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 what's the class? It was it was uh, HDR and Panorama. Okay, yeah, that's a great class. Um, there's all kinds of fun things I can teach you about that. Um, really good way of expanding the parameters of what the camera can record. Um, but yeah, boy, I haven't had students in that class for four or five months. No, oh. which is really frustrating. Again, really frustrating. So, uh, I think these beers are heating up because they're getting some steam off. Them. You see that? <laughs> right. Right. You get the lightning bolts in that beer and kind of makes it boil. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's pretty funny, isn't it? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm, I'm sorry, girl. Um, did I answer your question? Yeah. So no no one signed up for the class tomorrow. Yeah. There's only on it. I, I checked it earlier today and, and there's no one on much yeah, much I'm going to start checking your website to see um, what I might be interested in doing. Yeah, well, I appreciate that a lot. Um, one of the things I do, I have been doing a lot of instead of classes is tutoring. Uh, just one-on-one -on -one time with people. You know, I can teach you all kinds of stuff and on whatever topic you want to talk about. So that seems to be a more popular alternative to the classroom things. I probably do, I don't know, two, three, four tutorings a week. Um, and it's fun. I enjoy the one-on-one -on -one people. Because well, I got I to gotta finish doing my house. <laughs> That's a big job. So until I finish that house, I don't have much time. I haven't taken my cameras out. Yeah, well, summer's coming. I summer's coming. Finish this house. Well, for those of you that are still on, we have seven people left. Uh, the the meetups happen every third Wednesday. Uh, I should have said that earlier when I had a big crowd, but we do meet every third Wednesday, and there's always something fun going on that people can jump into uh, and do something creative with. So, um, if you're on the meetup site, um, great. If you're not, get on it. It's go to meetup.com, and uh, it's a it's a lot of fun. What's the books? It's getting late. I hear my wife stirring in the kitchen, so she must be trying to get some dinner together. Um, 
again, thanks for coming. Appreciate everybody hanging out with me and having fun and sharing the, sharing my enthusiasm. And um, stay in touch. If you have any uh, any questions, you should all know my email address, which is mark at markchamberlain.com. And um, have fun. Thanks. That's all great. Right. We will. <laughs> all right. Good night. Good to see you, Mark. Thanks, Lizzie. All right. Good night, guys. Good night.